All right, let me just share a quick screen of our agenda today. So the topic yes, of yes. our webinar to have uh, Dr. Chu, Chu Peng Yin from uh, Utah. Uh, both of them actually been running Monsoon Sim for a number of years already. And in fact, <coughs> we are so uh, honored to have uh, Dr. Chu, which is basically a trained computer and electrical engineers, uh, and then up helping students to teach them what we call enterprise resource planning business processes. And now he's being also assigned by the, by the university to create a new course uh, called uh, Digital Economy. So uh, I'm sure Dr. Chu has a lot of insight that he's going to share with us later on. Uh, and I'm going to pass the baton to Dr. Chu, uh, which is in the waiting. So we hope to uh, have some insight from Dr. Chu from Utah. Dr. Chu, you are there? So, okay, good afternoon. So, so this is uh, basically my title. So I'm Chu, I'm from University of Tunggu Abdul Rahman, Kampa, Malaysia. By the way, Kampa is just a small town. Uh, and I have been with this university uh, for, since 2005 already. So currently in the uh, faculty of ICT, I'm in charge of the uh, industrial training. So actually, and, uh, I do interact with a lot of IT companies throughout the years. Uh. So that's, that's why <laughs> now actually, Mr. Alex is actually has been one of our uh, faculty MOU partner already. So, so we do a lot of uh, industrial collaboration. So, okay, move on. Uh. So, so basically this is my outline. Uh. So I will, uh, I just, uh, just simply want to share the whole content is just want to share my experience in uh, uh, my or my journey with Monsoon Sim. So later I will we'll have some uh, little demo. So since uh, <coughs> we <coughs> we will have both Monsoon Sim and ERP, so I will show some of the things that we are now uh, currently doing and also uh, we did it in previous semesters. So this is basically, so we'll touch upon effectiveness, importance of reports, and then strategic planning. Uh, we create some of the monsoon sims with scenario in ERP, and then uh, the scoring metrics, and also the some a little bit of the report design. So these are the current areas that we <coughs> uh, teach the students and interact with the students. So some of the disclaimer. So in fact, uh, some of the slides has been uh, presented in a user a monsoon sim user conference back in Penang in January 2020. So, but however, I do have some extension, meaning that I do have some added contents on top of that. So that, uh, it, first of all, to serve again as a bridge for some of the newcomers and also not to board the, the oh, uh, double cut, sorry to say that, old listeners. So of course, <clears throat> since uh, I'm from faculty of ICT, so the content is more from the perspective of IT. Or information system because uh, the way you we utilize monsoon sima is actually the bridge towards a ERP system. So of course the the thing we discover is, is that uh, before we reach to ERP system, so we need the students to have some early reference or uh, or some business knowledge or domain knowledge in business. So of course uh, we start with general business. Uh. Now we are also looking into some other areas like using information so like health, agriculture, and education, and even property for CRM. So, <clears throat> so let me introduce some of my uh, monsoon sim courses. Before we reach that, so I'm from Utah Kampar campus. Sorry, a bit of advertisement just to introduce where am I from. So this uh, this is how my university looks like. So this uh, this is the the black one is my grand hall. So basically we got a lot of lakes. So these are ex tin mining lakes. So now become, now a lot of birds since no longer, no, here used to be a tin mining town, but now since most of tin mining has, has not been, have any activities at all since 30 years ago. So now it become a natural lake already. It's a beautiful place, yeah? Look at you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, uh, again, just, 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 just a short clip, but just a bit of a, so this is this one. So this one, just somebody have used a drone to just take the, just record the, just record the. <coughs> so you see water, water everywhere. So just a bit It's a short clip. Okay. So thank you. Now, 
we have been using monsoon since uh, so monsoon since uh, since 2000 uh, somewhere 2007 uh, 18 17 so it has been two plus years already so for so the new chromas actually i use it i have been presented some of this in uh, again so but uh just just as an introduction uh, so i use it to two cause on in two causes one is a, fu a quite fundamental business system this is a year end subject so we spend six plus weeks on monsoon scene. Mostly they also are one uh, first year IT students. Uh, in fact, it's a business information system uh, students, purely IT. So of course, uh, we will have individual practical tests on monsoon scene, also group practical tests. Later, we'll show some of the practical group practical test result when I have touch on one of the sections. So now currently uh, in this semester, I'm doing uh, using monsoon scene to do IT in CRM. So the we spend three plus weeks on monsoon sim labs. Ideally, we su are supposed to have a prerequisite uh, for this class so that they are well trained in monsoon sim inside out, then before we move into the next one. But however, since uh, they don't have a prerequisite, I have to deal with both IT and business students. And some of those have totally no idea on monsoon sim. And especially, I have a group of IT students, uh, information system engineering. They know nothing about business. So I have no choice. I have to squeeze in three weeks. We'll reduce version of what we had for six weeks then just to get them on board. Of course, we have an individual practical test at the week three. So that means the 10 modules on except HR, MRP, and MNT. So at the end, uh, we are now have assignments of mapping monsoon scene to ERP and CRM. Later, I'll show you some of the work or assignments that we, are, we have been doing. So of course, first thing, this is the first thing I like, that means like the effectiveness of monsoon sim. And why we use monsoon sim? Because monsoon sim is one, one of the ways that we find that is uh, to enable students to learn basic business within a short time. I have to emphasize the word within a short time. So first of all, now difficulties of teaching ERP. So, so a course uh, we started off uh, those those two courses. Uh, the first one is started back in 2014, and then the next, the second one I started back in 2017. So personally, I have run into a lot of issues uh, when when we show them a hard a ERP. So let me show you that for those, well, this is a ERP. Yeah? So I have two ERP now on. So one is uh, both of them open source. So I also have a CRM. So we, I have installed the first two in uh, AWS. Also, we have uh, uh, during the IT and CRM courses, we also teach students how to install this kind of system on on uh, AWS platform. So <clears throat> some of the some of the students will learn how to use a Linux command to install at least to launch an instance, and after that they have to go to the back end to install all this. Uh, the systems up. so we do lamp stack all these things and a bit later then uh, by the way all these are web uh, accessible by web so since we put it uh, onto AWS as actually it, it can be accessible throughout the world you can you can try it later so it is open to all well, however this one uh, uh, for ERP next I have installed it using uh, this one I have done it using a uh, uh, virtual box so this one so it has been running like this. So this is the thing running. So I show them the two sides of deployment. Since again, the object, just to show you that because we are IT class, the, the objective is to teach ERP. But having said that, uh, Monsoon Sim helped really do, did a great help on let the students understand uh, how business works. Before they know business, they must understand how a company is being run. And to be honest, uh, when we first look at ERP, uh, the one that I just showed you, uh, the, like this one, we click on it. Uh, so we look at the, all these assets, account, CRM, developer integration, uh, manufacturing project. So uh, by the way, this is a full-fledged open source ERP, and then it's used by a number of SMEs around the world. And then by the way, ERP Next is, uh, is, is from India. So later I'll show you some of the PO that we have uh, created just, to, just by using Monsoon Sims data. So, okay, having said that, now, the first thing I encountered when I first taught this subject back in 2014, uh, I faced this issue. I look at the ERP, I install this thing. Back, in, back then it's only version four, now it's, um, it's version 13 already. So I find that I need to 
at least know some business knowledge across six to seven degrees program though. Uh, some of these business pro program, starting with accounting, marketing, uh, business admin, and what else? Uh, a bit of project engineering or well, all this. I look at that. I actually, I, 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 at that moment, I actually am very under pressure. I have to be honest. Across these six or seven degrees program, the knowledge, and there are hundreds of business terms, business jargons, business concepts, and business tasks. And this is just by definition alone. All this has been started because I was sent by the faculty uh, to go to SAP for training. So during the, uh, because we, uh, I'm the first one to finish all the labs, but I do, did not understand a single thing on the lab. I just click, I just click and move on it. I still remember when I try look at one of these uh, ERP system, I still remember the word bank, oh, it's a bank reconciliation. Bank reconciliation. Uh. This, is the, this is the first word that stuck into me, my mind, because I don't understand it at all. I said, uh, what, uh, what am I doing? Uh? Second thing is accounts receivable. I was asking myself, what, what is that? So immediately from that experience, when I first uh, took this subject, I know the difficulty and the problem of students. Before you even move into ERP, you must settle all these things first, which I now summarize it as domain knowledge. And furthermore, we need to sort out their relationship. For example, that means uh, in Monsoon Sim, they prefer like this one, buying and CRM, any relationship, material requests and requests for quotation, any relationship, or are they linked in the process? Or do they, uh, uh, do, they, uh, 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 do they link to any data from customer side? So these are the questions that I need, need, need to, the Mr. Student need to know before they even click on the system itself. That is a difficulty. So, and then uh, and somehow this, this kind of software ERP uh, is traditionally, <laughs> it's a multi-user environment. It's used by uh, a lot of professional roles like accountant, warehouse manager, uh, what else up, uh, engineers, project managers, and CEO, CIO, this, they will log into these systems and uh, basically share, uh, share the data and then uh, generate reports. So that is a difficulty. The, the, the area span across is very wide. So, and then my task is all these, uh, I need to squeeze it into a semester as a basic. That's, that is year one subject. Uh. Okay, this is the difficulty to start here. So, of course, I, when I dissect it, this is one of the slides that I presented to my student year one. So I have to tell the students what is company operation, functional business area, business process, as business function. Those were the theory days that I had to explain. And then at the end, the students just look at you with eyes big, big, and don't, and very confused. Okay, come with Monsoon Sim. At the end, thank God, this is my conclusion. Talk and lecture so much can't compare to playing a few Monsoon Sim games. So a clear testimony of ex experiential learning. I turn on a game, tell them a bit of theory, and then they start playing already. So I save a lot of breath though. And then they, they immense, immerse themselves into the game and then they are happy. Then at the end, it achieved my objective. Let me show you in the next, next few slides uh, what the student experience and some of my so-called lab. Okay, of course, just now show you that this is the, the ERP. Uh, so, okay, let me, let me, okay, this is the ERP. Uh. Now, <coughs> how the, now the question is how Monsoon seems to solve the difficulty of learning ERP or learning business within a short time. So when you play the game, uh, students are forced to pick up on a spot uh, some concepts quickly in order to win the game. So later I'll show you. Uh, so uh, together with the relationship of terms, uh, interpreting a dashboard, uh, I'll be honest with minimum explanation for myself. Later, Having know this, and then I try to link the business objective and strategy and tactics with the KPI and matrix, I will show you later also. So for example, how to increase net profit. So we, of course, we start with just four modules in Monsoon Sim, and then we eventually we increase the complexity. So the students can build on their very core knowledge, let's say start with retail, then slowly they add in more things and more things. So, and I find it works very fine. Within six weeks, the students know it very well. And then from the test score or practical exam scores, they, most of them, they score quite well. So this one, okay. Let's start with this one uh, from a student point of view. 
So this is one of the dashboard uh, that I just copied. So if you go to any monsoon sim, I'll just show it to you that, okay, this is a monsoon sim, okay. I, okay, I just do it. So this, uh, this uh, of course, this is, uh, we have uh, 12, we have all 13 uh, the, uh, modules all turn on. Uh. When it starts, I only turn on four, one, two, three, four, general, finance, purchasing, and retail. So it only have uh, at most uh, two, uh, just two or three dashboards only. First thing you need to understand is when before you play the game, how to read the dashboards. This itself, uh, from here, you have a lot of terms already. Just imagine that you are a new student, you know nothing about business, then and you're being thrown at the first game. Then you have to, I tell him that, okay, you need to make a lot of net profit. Uh. So of course the question you start to ask, what is a net profit? So you know, oh, oh, this is a net profit. So now this is the finance dashboard. Uh, some of the terms are sales revenue, COGS, trading profit, cash on hand, overdraft, delinquent payouts, all this average cost. You have to make sense out of it. No choice. Because, or because you, need to, you need to win the game, isn't it? So you will have something like, because all these are, for those who are new, then you have scoring metrics like this one. So you need to, this is your business objective plus a bit of KPI. So of course this one we don't have KPI. So I haven't set the KPI yet. So there are two, two matrices later, I will touch a bit upon that also. Now, having said that, let's look at this one. So do you need to make sense? Uh, just imagine, do you make the next make sense? What is COGS? Cost of goods sold. Oh, what is that? Uh? Trading profit, what is that? Uh? So I said start with net profit first. So this is how, uh, let me show you, this is how my first simulations Year one, sem one, semester one, first lab, first simulation. I turn on four modules, then I run 18 days, 50 seconds per day. So this is my scoring metrics, only one net profit. So KPI is also net profit. So you try to earn as much as possible because scoring metrics is uh, for those who are new, you're comparing among your competitors within the same marketplace. But as long as you achieve uh, 100,000, at least uh, you score KPI, then you achieve something that means you you, you meet, at least you meet objective or your sales target, or uh, whatever, a uh, business target. So of course in here, point of notes is I need to teach them in order to reach this objective, uh, I have to break down certain tasks that, or you need to run at the optic because uh, the sales has been done automatically for, for, for retail. So the only thing the student need to do is actually replenish the inventory. So there are three, three purchasing. So I have to explain what is regular purchase, what is a uh, future delivery, what is blanket purchase. I have to understand this one. And then at the same time, I have to teach them how to read reports, uh, how, how you see the retail demand or in units sold, which is this one. So you have to learn all these things. So now we are teaching, means a set of combination of aggregate skills in order to reach the objective. So this is the unit sold. So it's typically how I teach the students, that this is how you read your retail demand. So this is an important graph. So this is your unit remain. This is, how, this is your inventory, you better take a look at it. So this, this is, these are the few things. Uh, so just, and then I show you uh, one more thing. So, sorry. So this thing, okay. We start with this. And then, uh, then with this formula, net profit, take care of, this is a relationship. Take care, take care of the three things first, revenue, sales, COGS, and operating expenses. So I explain also, I only use uh, this less than two pages. Half an hour of introduction, start the game already. So student, of course, scramble with uh, scramble to play it. Huh? So this is how it starts and it works fine because th that's hence the word experiential learning. <laughs> Sorry to use the word there. Uh, I also use the word experiential learning as if you're thrown in the water and then you have to swim. Huh? So then student after the game will have peer pressure because they will ask, how come my friends, the next, uh, the guy sitting next to me play better than me? I'm super not happy, so I better ask questions. Uh, this, this, this helps also in a hidden, in an indirect way. So because uh, when you have all these scoring metrics like this thing, uh, so I show the, some of those who are new. Okay, because, uh, so this is scoring metrics. Uh. So of course it's more complicated now uh, because uh, during the first lap we only have one uh, net profit only. Of course, these are more advanced games. Uh. So you see that how come the, the, we have few teams? How come NYOB is better than Chinchaila? All these kind of things. Students will ask. 
So in order to score better than his friends, it's better go and understand uh, all the things. So I will play the same game again so that they start to uh, remedy and play better because they learn from it. Again, with minimum coaching, just, just highlight things that they, they are asking. Uh, that's all. So I find that instead of last time, I put out a little theories, all these slides. So I will say that I did save a lot by breath. So that's a good thing. Okay, let me see. Okay, now. Next thing is uh, talk about rollout. Now you see that. So of course, if I, I have to, this is very similar to micro course because uh, this one I did it back in 20, uh, when I designed back in 2018 because I stress that uh, in the, uh, because of the assessment, uh, I need to do an individual uh, playing. So most of my students, when they start off, they don't play a team game. So they play individually. So at the end, each of them play a full 13 module on individually. Of course, with uh, maybe 60 or 70 seconds per, per virtual day. Uh. So in fact, the concept is very similar to micro course. So I do recommend some of you, uh, uh, if you want to start, then you can look at the micro course. It's very effective. So of course, the rollout is I start with retail with finance knowledge. So after that, I add another module forecast, add another marketing slowly, add, 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 because the basic is still retail. So after that, you switch to and uh, this is one customer group. Next customer group is B2B. Then you have two more customer group is service and uh, ECM e-commerce. In fact, in Monsoon Sim, they simulate four groups of customers who behave quite differently. Of course, you have ocean, all these are psychometric, uh, no, psychology metrics. And then after that, you learn how to B2B. After that, uh, you start to combine everything, uh, B2B plus retail, then how they interact with each other, then slowly turn on nine modules, 10 modules, uh, and then eventually 13 modules with complexities, meaning that I turn on like importers, uh, meaning that you need to take care of Forex. So sometimes uh, somewhere that I turn on ECM, uh, you have to take care of vendors out of stock. There's a setting there, so all this. So I just show you some of for the for the new ones. Uh, so I, so some of this like accrual, accrual, uh, accrual accounting, uh, which involve accrual accounting, which involve uh, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable. So all these are set at the beginning, this was no, because that makes a simpler game. After they turn on yes, then the finance will have, of course, these two metrics. So payables and receivable. All these uh, concepts I explain one by one. That is built on top of the core, no the, the knowledge they really learn. So this is how uh, basically I teach for the first six weeks. So at the end of the six weeks, so I will have a practical test individual. Then later we move on to uh, uh, group, uh, group uh, we form teams, ask them to form a team with their friends, five person. Then we move into team games. So, okay, now I talk about a bit on the team games. So before that, I would like to highlight this. Okay, this is by Mr. A.B. So they posted somewhere. Actually, I, this is from uh, Michigan State University by Dr. Graspi. So this is one of, I just take part of his testimony. Uh, because when I read through this testimony, uh, I look at it, I was like, oh, I'm not the only one. So the, those that highlighted in red, uh, actually resonate with me. For example, you look at the, some of that. So uh, Monsoon Sima, they're gonna use it in a master program. So as a way to introduce students who have limited business background, similar to my situation, I have even students who know nuts. The, to the task of integration required in a business setting, precisely my problem. The sim requires students to learn and understand business and run a business, precisely my point, before you even touch on ERP. Now, next thing, the ability to provide students performance data for them to analyze and use their analytic skills to determine appropriate business strategy. We'll come to that later when I talk about, a bit on uh, decision making. And next thing, I'm looking forward uh, to replace uh, this uh, monsoon sim with SAP. Uh, sorry, uh, any SAP? No, I assume there are no SAP people around. Uh, sorry that uh, I have done that already. So this is what I have done also. So the next two, in fact, is what I present. For that, I use Odoo, then also with a bit of SAP, I try SAP Business by Design. I also have joined an SAP University Alliance program back in even 2011. So I sent for training, but at the end, it 
there were sorry to say that uh, the effect is not there because the students, as I said, you need to know 200 terms relationship and then the content is very dry because it's not dynamic, it's not like monsoon sim is a game. So uh, you, you got to make decisions and you got to face the consequences when, when you make your a wrong decision. So it's more fun. Then you do data entry, uh, students don't see the value of ERP. They just say that, well, what, did, what, what, what am I doing with this, with, with, this, with this thing? So previously, I'm just using this one without ERP. Uh. So it's very dry, all this old word, and then very complicated, then all this manual. So it doesn't deliver that feeling, uh, that or learning experience, although it is very hands-on. So hence, uh, I'm not uh, uh, sorry to say that I this is uh, I'm not doing a hard sale for monsoon sim. I have to be honest, but I use two years, one year plus to justify to convince my faculty to switch from uh, to switch from SAP the program to monsoon sim because we have that bu uh, a budget now. Since then, nobody say a word. And last week, uh, last two weeks, uh, 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 thank you, Monsoon Sim and Mr. Abi. Uh, they conduct a, uh, they conduct a, uh, 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 online uh, uh, training TTT, to train the trainer or uh, or experience uh, Monsoon Sim. My university got ten lecturers attend, four from uh, business faculty, six from IT faculties, because they have listened, they heard law, they have learned, heard a lot of Monsoon Sim, so they all come and join. And then my feedback is very fun. Very down, very practical. Uh, this is this this was the, this these are the two words I hear from my colleagues. Okay, now come to report uh, interpretation. Now, basically, although uh, this is just my very simple uh, value chain of information system that I tell my students. So when you look at the information system, what is your what what what's the value? What 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 is this used for? So just uh, just manuals and then in uh, just a e forms or that you fill it in. So of course you go through a process that uh, digitization, data collection. Then you you fill the data. Then you do report and analysis. Then most important thing you need decision. You have to do decision making. So this is called data driven the decision making with a proper ERP system. Okay. So and then this is my motivation. So because. At the end of the class, I need to do both. So first thing, monsoon sim will covers reporting and decision making. And also, in under decision making, you have dynamic uh, business uh, scenario interaction, which you plan your strategy. Because this one decision making, a series of decision making and next move will make the thing more interesting. Of course, the real, of course, monsoon sim does not cover digitization uh, and also data collection. So the over, the overlap between two is reporting. And we, I have to, after Monsoon Sima, I have to cover back in my course uh, some, some part on digitization. Later I will show you, just, uh, just, just in a brief way, how, how, how I do it. So, so this is, uh, so this is very important decision making because a lot of students, uh, or even my lecturers knows that, oh, now this is an even, even uh, Michigan State University in their master program. This is, this is the thing, you see? Uh, Sorry that I didn't show the full uh, testimony because uh, I just highlight uh, those that are relevant to to my container. But uh, I think Mr. Abby later we may share with you. So this is a very interesting from there because both of us almost result, that means uh, face the same similar problem. How to teach this thing with Monsoon Sim? Then we can highlight which one is report, which one is decision. This one has to be highlighted uh, to the students itself. So then, of course, now, now, so when you, when you make decisions, uh, you have to know what's your objective. So uh, when you, that means all this is a series of integrated skills, though. You start with your objective. Later we look at, when you look at KPI and uh, this matrix, uh, that's, that's our, the business objective of the game. From there, you have to devote, breaking down into a series of uh, move that move towards the goal. This is uh, in any uh, success, uh, whatever success, uh, success story, uh, they will do this. Uh, you need to have a clear objective, then you break into different tasks and then you move towards your goal. 
And now, of course, in, under the context of monsoon sim, uh, then you have to ask, uh, how do I make decisions? Sir? Uh, how do I make a series of moves? Where do I get the read the correct data to move these correct decisions? So that at the end, I achieve the, uh, the goals of monsoon sim and win the game and outbeat my competitors. Uh, this is the questions that I want my student to ask. So when you come to correct data reporting and decision making, uh, so something like this, uh, something like this, for example, uh, something like this, uh, as simple as this one. Say to retail, I go to procure finished goods. As simple as buying something, uh, this is the decision. The decision you make, uh, I have to highlight to students that you have to make a clear decision. So there are a few criteria that you need to evaluate and read the data correctly. Now, now we have three vendors. So Malaysia, Sing, and Thai. So which one do you buy from? Or you go to a cheapest one. At least you know what you're doing or you go for the cheapest one because you know that in order to achieve net profit, you have to lower down your COGS. So you just like every day that you, the means this can be derived from our everyday experience. You buy the cheapest one with the same quality. Of course, next thing you need to highlight that, okay, delivery. So the lead time, one day, two day, four days. And then the term payment of terms, uh, whether you pay cash or you, you buy with a, a credit purchase or what's the credit limit and how much you buy. Because the more you buy, you have, you have discount. Maybe here you see that the discount, okay, you buy from this, you have higher discount. That even lower down your COGS or average cost of your goods. This is the decision. Nobody can pinpoint that whether you make a correct decision, only that maybe you buy from, you may have your, during the game, you may have your reason or because I prioritize this one. I'm, I, I, my customer is waiting already. I got high demand. I better, although I suffer a bit of high price and low discount, but I can get my sales up and eventually get my net profit. This is decisions. So it makes the thing that this is, I tell students there's no right or wrong. You are not memorizing uh, some memorizing something and go to the exam and, 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 and write it down. So this is a dynamic. So you have to understand this one and then I cannot even, even I myself, I cannot tell you a clear cut answer. You have to see that at the end with a combined series of move, whether you outbid the next, <laughs> next, the next guy sitting next to you or not. So that's why the basic question is what should I do? So this one, okay, again, go back objective. What can you do? Where do you get your correct data? So this is what I want to highlight. This is actually automatically when you play the game is kind of with a, as I said just now, with a very minimum, uh, I wish, should I use the word minimum? <laughs> uh, with a minimum set of theory, uh, they are onto the game already and they learn it on the, during the game on the spot. Of course, different students have different learning experience uh, at the end, uh, so I need to point out the mistakes. Uh. Okay, now I move on to something that is extra for uh, after the user conference. So, because uh, we try on, this is something that I, I, I want to ask myself that for students uh, who, because at the beginning we have individual students, the individual assessment, because one student play a game like this, one student. Now we group them into a group of five. We add in something I call business scenarios. Business scenarios meaning that instead of having a default settings, uh, so because as a, as a CT, you can, you can change all these things. You can change the overdraft interest. You can change the initial cash. You see in this scenario, instead of the default 3.5 million, I just set it to 1 million. That means you have a very low starting initial cash. That makes the whole strategy or game very different. So I think this scenario is, I think previously I said, is a, I call it startup. At the same time, I will encourage certain things that I may make something like a, I may, I may have made the machine very cheap or so something like this one. So very cheap. So you see, uh, previously I lowered down the price so that I, that I can induce some behavior that encourage production. So these are the scenarios. So the scenarios that I have designed, uh, so this is the scenario I design. I design at the end, I design around like 12 scenarios. So standard, moderate, tough, retail, tough market. So tough market meaning that there's very low demand. Uh, prosperous, pro prosperous market meaning that both B2B, uh, e-commerce service, all those like you, you have, seems like you have endless business, like uh, all, the, all the orders uh, start to drop from sky like that. So of course at the end, like a uh, moderate market meaning that you have moderate demand. 
then I set in some uh, high uh, HR expenses. So for example, like this in this game, uh, typically by default uh, in a standard game, uh, so HR staff is 4%. But now I want to make the, the team members who are in charge of HR a bit more difficult, I set to 7 people. 7% and then I said that this, I, I said it that they will resign very easily so that <coughs> the HR, the, 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 uh, <coughs> the team members who are in charge of HR department will be very busy oh, because you need to take care of the uh, staff turnover. So this is one of the ways that <coughs> I try to, uh, should I say, make my students life a bit difficult so that the, the motivation is they have to go on through a different market with different conditions. In real life, we have this, isn't it? Some, some, some part in the world, they have very high expenses, things are very expensive. And some part in the world, they have very low, low labor costs. So this is try to simulate that. that. And then when you are having a startup, you may have a low <coughs> starting cash. And then some places, because of very high competition, you have low margin. So we, in fact, uh, what we have done is we, play because the reason why i uh, this is what we play later i explain this point so this because i treat this as a practical test meaning that all uh, the result or the scores that i play will go into the final grade of this class of this subject so in fact we play 10 games over the weekend each game is one hour long so of course i don't think monsoon seemed to loan me uh, 100 players over because I have how many students? Are? I have 17 teams and 86 students. These are the results. So they all play uh, Saturday, we play four games, four hours. Sunday, we play four games, and then Friday, we play one game. So we're starting with game zero. Game zero is not counted because I just test it only. So we play standard, moderate, startup. Because I want to ask this question. Because I discovered that uh, from the observation, uh, students who did quite well in some scenarios, but not others, discover that some teams are actually memorizing their steps or using the same strategies. So when they put into the dynamic situation or the scenario start to change, conditions start to change, they did not, they are not doing well. So I call this team unstable and not consistent. And then the data have showed that. Okay, this one, uh, I, I, I do a scoring matrix. Uh, we, if you do a rank, uh, so that means in a market, because I have two marketplaces back then. Then when I, <clears throat> when I try to, see that whether they have consistent, meaning that uh, this is different scenarios, just like rank zero, because this basically follow this series. Of, so game one, game two. So you find that uh, some to some teams have very high standard deviation. So meaning, especially this, this some of the team. So especially you look at the last team. Uh, so they have been ranked in some game, uh, they are ranked number one, but in some game, they rank number six or seven. You see, they, they, they means like, uh, in, in, and then somewhat like this one. So they have been ranked one before, but they can drop to, they can bankrupt or drop to uh, rank seven on uh, rank eight or almost last in the marketplace. So you see that, uh, so you see that uh, this shows that uh, in fact, students, uh, uh, if they play a lot of standard, uh, they will all, <laughs> they will find that they memorize the step. So first day, first two days do what, uh, first, uh, the second, the next 10 days do what, they memorizing the steps. So I just try to prove my theory that I put them through a lot of different things and then my theory is correct. Some teams are very consistent. Of course, some are consistently good, some are consistently bad. So like the team number three, uh, they're consistently bad. Their senior division is 1.5 bit, but their average is always seven. So somewhere there, but but you look at the first team, uh, So this one, uh, this one, because they bankrupt at uh, they, they, even even as as stable as the first team, uh, or very consistent first game, uh, So even game eight, they bomb it, so they they go bankrupt. So you see that in game eight, uh, uh, which is a which is a tough market with high expenses, uh, The good teams don't know what they have done, so they bankrupt, and then the poor team still survive though. This is very, to me, is very surprised. So this is actually a, a very good case studies so that I need to do. Uh, I need to do more studies to how to to see, to see, to look into it. So I do have some suggestions from Monsoon Sim. Just my personal suggestions. 
I do uh, suggest that during competition, I let the teams instead of playing one game, I go through a few games with different scenario and then aggregate the score. That will really show the true potential or true strength of a particular team. So because my data show that well, some of them like standard deviation very high, that means they are they are not very stable. Sometimes they score the second in the in, in the marketplace, then suddenly they score eight and then back to four already. So you see any the standard deviation that is more than two two I will call it is a very inconsistent team. So this is just one of my finding that that is uh, extra compared to what I presented back in the Penang uh, conference. Okay, now just quickly go through that. Okay, this I have presented before because ultimately I need to uh, teach the RP system. Again, monsoon seam is just a bridge. So what I did is in June semester, I have given my students three assignments also. I, this is what I have, it, the, the assignment is still ongoing. I still don't have a full answer yet because I asked them, I teach them how, uh, I teach them how to install an Odoo uh, suit CRM that I have shown you just now on AWS and also uh, uh, teach them how to install a uh, ERP next in the virtual box. So after that, I create five days of data on Monsoon Sim. Because why? I need to teach them something. Well, I call it digitization. So digitization meaning that day zero, uh, all this actually when you, uh, when you do set your data uh, back in day zero, uh, in fact, uh, like this is, this is uh, day 100, uh, but day zero, uh, they already data day already. So all the things are set up, all the, all the, uh, some of the entry uh, initial cache is, uh, it has been set up there. So I tell my students, go and get a blank ERP. I show you how to start it. You'll find, you'll, you'll find out that even day zero is super not easy. You need to key in a lot of things. So <clears throat> of course, uh, this is uh, just just now that what I have shown is I will install two of the system in uh, AWS uh, EC2. This is also part of the game. I'm uh, not part of the cost work. And then I create one monsoon sim, and I ask uh, and I run just five days of the monsoon sim. I ask all of them to log on to the to 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 this uh, marketplace. So this is all my students. They are not playing the games. I just ask them go inside and get your data. I want you to use this monsoon sim data to map into a real ERP. So you have been having fun playing the games. So now try to experience how, how in real world, uh, as if that you you have it means you make a monsoon sim company. Uh. So just like this one, you have a monsoon sim company, or you have uh, like this one. You this is a monsoon sim company. So you let me see a tongue. So you create your monsoon sim company like this one. Uh, just uh, just borrow the monsoon sim academy for for. Uh, realism purpose, uh, just make it look a bit like reality like that. So now you set up a Monsoon Sim Academy. So after that, you need to set up a lot of things. This is a blank software, no data. So what are you going to do? So where are you going to get the data? So what are you going to set first? What are you going to configure first? So at least I will give them a, I will give them a guideline. Uh, so this one. So I say that you need to set up master data, starting from company, chart of accounts, vendors, suppliers, product, customers, warehouse, employees, user, and then e-commerce portal. So same thing, you need to duplicate it in two of the, year, two of the ERP. So including, you see uh, this one. So like chart of accounts, you go to Monsoon Sim, you go to, for, you go to finance, you take your profit and loss. So these are all your operating expenses. So these are some of the operating expenses. Please go to this account, chart of accounts, and then you try to map it inside. See where you, you, you have to duplicate the set of accounts into this blank ERP. So these are expenses. Where does, see where, where does it go through? Uh, exist by default, they have already have some uh, accounts, uh, expenses account being set already in, but you double check whether the monsoon seem have any extra account or not. Salary is there or not, rental is there or not. So uh, Forex loss is there or not, you better create it. So this is one of the very simple exercises or a sign exercise that I ask my student to do. So now this is still ongoing. So next thing, after setting up the master data, so you have to set transaction data. So transaction data like this one, purchase finished goods. How do you duplicate or map this data into a real ERP system? 
So you click, 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 very fun, isn't it? But in real life, how the system carries up. So of course you have to go to, then I show them a bit of example. So of course you have to create, you have to go to buying, then you have to go to purchase order. So these are some of the purchase order example that I have created. Like you, your supplier, you have to, you already have a supplier, we have G1. So assume that you order on this date. So you order apple juice, orange juice and melon juice. So of course, before that, you must set up your master data first. So you must set up your product. So this is your apple juice, boxes, straw, your raw materials and finished goods. You better set it up. So like this apple juice. So, okay, sorry. So like this one, put in something, key in the price and things like that, purchase. So a simple one. So this one, just to let them experience with breaching. Uh, after playing Monsoon Sim, you need to bridge the gap. Okay, this is, okay, after that, more, uh, this is CRM. Now, sorry to say that, uh, we are still, uh, that's why I highlight here, I, I still figure out how to map B2B of Monsoon Sim into CRM. Since this is still a task that me and my students still try to figure out how, how this is being done. So I still do not have answers for that. For ERP, we do have some answers already. So at least let them experience that. Uh. At the same time, I tell my students, marketing and Monsoon Sim may not or can't be mapped into suit CRM because monsoon sim marketing is for B2C. So traditional, this CRM is for B2B, so you have to take care of it. So these are some of the nitty gritty that I uh, need to inform my students during the mapping. Of course, this is the e-commerce. Huh? So when you have a uh, set of the product, so we configure it so that it will appear uh, as a, as a e-commerce portal, huh? just like as to simulate this part. Huh? So in monsoon sim, you have e-commerce, isn't it? Or e-commerce, so how, so this is a self-serve e-commerce, I tell them. This is not a marketplace. So like most of the ERP, they already have this function built in. So as long as you link it to your product master, so your this kind of software like oh, do what it means. Uh, when it, it when it when you lock out, uh, this is oh, when you lock out uh, like this, uh, this is already a, a e-commerce page already. So you need to configure it out so that when a customer comes in, so this is a it will be your de facto e-commerce uh, portal. So this is uh, what I have told them. Okay, next thing. So now I'll make, because I think the, the time, so I try to make it a bit faster. So a bit over time already. No, including, uh, now we talk about the assessment in Monsoon Sim. So this has been presented before. So uh, actually in order to assess a uh, Monsoon Sim, you can base on two things, either KPI or metrics. So KPI is more on the absolute number. So you have, you have this KPI score by uh, target, no, this one, or uh, KPI, you can enter that. Of course, uh, this one, you can set something like a retail sales or whatever. When it appears, so this, it means uh, KPI is, is to teach students to hit some quota or target numbers. Let's say your e-commerce your e sales, it has to be over 300, then you win the game, you, then you consider you, you, you fulfill certain objective. Or the retail sales, you have to hit 12 million something like this one. So then after that you submit, then it will appear in the, this thing. So as, uh, as something that you can refer to. Uh, so this is a uh, KPI like this one for those uh, who are new to Monsoon Sim. Of course, scoring metrics is compare among yourself. Uh, uh, among this is uh, because you have a maximum score of 100. So you compare among your competitors. So you can check your competitors under if from a user point of view under here. So basically, you're, now uh, if I turn on the scoring metrics, uh, the, now the user can see it. So they, they try to make sense of this, uh, the scoring metrics. Huh? So what I want to highlight in this uh, scoring metrics is this. Okay, eh, where's my, the scoring metrics. Okay, the scoring metrics is, <clears throat> the, because we observe something, because when you set the scoring metrics, uh, it is a combination because maximum you can set 10 scoring metrics. Some scoring metrics uh, is directly proportional, meaning that if, one, if this like, if your net profit is doing well, normally is your, if your trading profit is doing well, definitely your net profit will be doing well. It's very obvious. But some scoring metrics uh, to my observation, uh, it's inversely proportional though. Like sales revenue, we also, I observe that personal, this is my personal observation, sales revenue are operating expenses. I observe that, uh, sorry, I fast forward a bit. So 
This is my personal observation. My most preferred metrics for any company is net profit. That's why I put the highest weightage for net profit. Of course, I have observed uh, two cases in my class that I have student player top net profit but close to bankrupt. Cases like this happen because they simply spend, reckless spending at the end. My, that's why I like to put it net profit and plus cash on hand. But if you put the cash on hand as one of the matrix, uh, whether you put it 10% or 20%, uh, student will play tricks, meaning that student, this is how the student double could cheat the game. Uh, so they will borrow a lot of loan at the end of the game to boots up the score. Uh, a lot of students doing that uh, if they know the trick. Of course, later I will use the current ratio to counter the above. So, and of course, in order to know all these scoring metrics, uh, I have to I have to have another half lecture just to explain to them, uh, just to just to highlight all the scoring metrics. So, what is this cash on hand? How do you score it? The higher the better. Current ratio, how you define it? Oh, current total assets. So you better know how to loan usage because sometimes depends on the game and depends on the CT, yeah? so they will set different scoring metrics that I tell the student is your business objective. Just like you are having an exam, so you try to see which point is higher, so you try to score on certain questions. Huh? So then, like overdraft, of course, before scoring the points, you must know what you are scoring. So this is your, this is, you better learn all this trading profit and what is their relationship with others together with uh, the all, all other business terms. And moreover, this is now the objective, the main objective. If you score high, you win already. So this is what I have told the students. So I spent half a lecture just to explain what is staff resign. So which is essentially all the things here. So we go through this also. So like, okay, let's say you go to scoring metrics. So I did a scoring metrics. So all this, so we, I have to, now, now we have some new scoring metrics. So I have to redo that that document again uh, as an update. That one is done based on which, uh, version seven. Now version eight, a lot of things has been changed. My finance, even some, even this one is new to me, operating ratio, sorry to say that. I myself also don't know what is that. So I have to click on the I and then go and make sense on how, uh, what is this song? So operating ratio, operating expenses plus cost of goods sold divided by sales revenue. So if, if I turn on this matrix, how how is it going to overall uh, affect overall the the strategy and uh, marketplace. So all this and how the player will perceive it. All this I have to factor it before I, I turn on a particular scoring metrics. So personally, of course, uh, I try to move faster. Personally, uh, since I teach CRM, uh, so my, my, my metrics uh, are mostly on sales though. So I need them to play on how to more on a sales driven, meaning that you need to do well on your retail sales. You need to how to sell well in e-commerce. You even need to take care of your service. So of course, wholesale B2B, you need to do it well also. Huh? Hello, Dr. Cho. Yes, okay, I kind of. Uh, we have uh, actually overrun quite a lot. So I think. Uh, don't, oh, okay, uh, then I wrap it up already. So sorry, maybe. Okay, so I just highlight that. Another session moving forward, uh, we have a lot of things to share as I can see. So if you can just quickly wrap it up in two minutes, I'm gonna leave some question answer time for them. Yes, uh, I will just uh, have two more slides then I'll wrap it up already. I apologize for for extend uh, the yeah, time. I should so, have more time for you earlier on because uh, the time has been fixed earlier on. So apologies. Okay, last thing. Okay, last thing. Uh, because uh, this one, uh, the group matrix almost come to an end already. So the report design with a monsoon sim. So since we are IT, uh, so uh, we find that, uh, sorry to say that some of the reports in a, in a monsoon sim, because now it's text based, uh, it's very hard for us to make quick decision. So uh, this is the future work. In fact, it's ongoing already. This is, this is done by my, my students. So we you because now we can assess the data database already. So thank you that uh, Monsoon said to open up the database. So we can use tools like Power BI, go and tap it into the database and create our own reports. So this is one way. So we also look at another ways. Uh, we use web scraping uh, to scrap some of the data and produce a report also. So this is all, uh, this is ongoing. 
if the project is successful, so some this this material will turn immediately turn it into a syllabus, and then we're going to teach students how we do it. So using data analytics, no sorry, using monsoon sim as a data analytics tool. So this is uh, I hopefully this one can be completed in the next year. Then we can start teaching it already. Okay, that's all from my presentation. Sorry for the or delay. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, that is an, indeed very, very elaborate and very comprehensive and I uh, should have allocated more time for you actually. But we will, we will do another one in time to come.